Okay, so what we just learned in the last video um, was a little bit uh, about how to find the x-intercepts of a nonlinear function, specifically uh, a function where y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, again, you can use the quadratic formula, which means x, or which is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Or you can use something called completing the square. Now everybody knows how to use this formula. It's it's a it's a formula from back in grade school that you were taught to memorize. Um, completing the square, not a, not everybody knows how to do that. The last video showed a couple of examples. Let's go over one more real quick. So let's assume we have negative uh, two x squared plus seven uh, x plus. 10 equals y. Okay, so this is a standard sort of quadratic equation. We're going to set y equal to 0 because that's how we find the x-intercepts. And we get negative 2x squared plus 7x plus 10 equals 0. Now again, the first step in completing the square is to make uh, a equal to 1. We're going to do that by dividing through the entire thing by negative 2. That gives us x squared plus negative 7 halves x plus negative 10 halves equals 0. Okay? Now, simplifying this a little bit, we get x squared minus 7 halves x plus, or plus, excuse me, that should be a minus, sorry, minus 5 equals 0. Now the next step is to move C over to the other side. So that gives us x squared minus 7 halves x equals 5. Then we're going to take one half of b and square it, and that is the completing the square step, okay? When we add that to each side, then we've completed the square. So first, we need to take one half of seven halves and square it. Now again, because you're squaring it, you don't have to worry about the minus sign, right? Because even if you put a minus sign in here, it's still going to be positive. So that equals 7 fourths squared, which equals 49 over 16. Okay, so now we're going to add that to each side. That gives us x squared minus 7 halves x plus 49 over 16 equals 5 plus 49 over 16. So now we should have a perfect square on this side. It's just, what is it? Well, you know, if we had to um, uh, back out what times what would equal 49 over 16, of course, that would be, what, 7 over 4. Okay, and that is negative 7 halves. So we need negatives in our parentheses. So our perfect square then is x minus 7 fourths squared. Okay. Now again, in order to double check this, what can we do? We can just FOIL that out. So that would be x minus 7 fourths times x minus 7 fourths what does that equal? That equals x squared minus 7 fourths x minus 7 fourths x plus 49 over 16. And of course, negative 7 fourths minus 7 fourths, okay, equals what? 14 fourths. But that can be reduced to 7 halves. So that's x squared minus 7 halves x 
plus 49 over 16, and that is exactly what we have here. So we know we completed our square properly. So then this equals, and we're, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, find a common denominator at this point. Um, 16 times 5 is 80. So that'd be 80 plus 49 is 129 divided by 16. Okay. Now we're going to take the square root of each side. So that leaves us with x minus 7 fourths equals plus or minus the square root of 129 over 16. So then what does x equal? x equals 7 fourths plus the square root of 129 over 16 or x equals 7 fourths minus the square root of 129 over 16. Now this, that, according to my calculations, is approximately 4.58. This, according to my calculations, is approximately negative 1.08. So this, so x equals, so the two x-intercepts then are negative 1.08 and positive 4.58, okay? So that's another example of how to use the completing the square, um, uh, uh, how, how to use completing the square in order to determine what your x-intercepts are. Here's the thing that nobody knows. If you complete the square of that, you actually get the quadratic formula, okay? In other words, the quadratic formula is derived from completing the square. 